Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we are going to be covering the remaining problems uh, from the topic of scaling. And this is from the chapter of electrostatics. So problem 19 and 26 are from the build section and problem eight is from the check section. So this video will be like a part two uh, for the yesterday's video. So make sure you go check that out before watching this video. So yeah, and with that, let's begin with problem number 19. We have two parallel equilateral triangular plates that are placed overlapping each other very close to each other. The plates carry uniformly distributed unlike charges of equal modulus. So uh, this question is based on the surface charge cases and yesterday's cases were dependent on the volume charge cases, right? Deep inside the region, uh, that is somewhere close to the center, in between the plates, the electric field is uniform, but near its edges, it becomes non-uniform. If modulus of electric field deep inside the plates is E0, find the modulus of the electric field at the midpoint of the line AB. What happens if the plates have a shape of a regular pentagon? Okay guys, so in electrostatic, you know, when we discuss the electric field due to an inf infinite non conducting plane uh, whose surface charge density is plus sigma, and we take another plate whose surface charge density is minus sigma, then the field in between the plates uh, came out to be sigma by epsilon naught. Okay, so now even if you take two circular plates, uh, as long as the distance of separation is much smaller in comparison to its area, then we can say that the electric field in between the regions come out to be sigma by epsilon naught. So it doesn't really matter if the shape is triangular, circular, or any regular polygon for that matter. Uh, as long as the point that we are looking at is far away from the edges, uh, we can say that the electric field is uniform in that region. Okay guys, so using yesterday's logic, if we talk about points that are really close to the center and in between the plates, then the magnitude of electric field in those in that region is given to be E0, right? And now the question is, we have to determine the electric field about one of its vertex and let's call this point. So we are going to consider a regular hexagon, which is made up of six triangles, which are exactly similar to our original triangle. And hence as a result, now the point A at which we had to find the field is now the center of his of this hexagon. Okay guys, so now I want you guys to imagine two regular hexagons. So let's say this is the plane of the upper hexagon and let's say this is the plane of the lower hexagon. Now the field due to these hexagons uh, at the central point which is close to the uh, close to the center is again going to be uniform. So if this is the positive plate, this is a negative plate, the field is going to be in the downward direction. And this is again going to be uniform. But now the question is, uh, by what factor is it going to scale as compared to E0? I'll give you guys a few seconds to think. And the answer is actually it's E0 itself. And the reason for that is, if you remember the parallel plate case, the electric field just came out to be sigma by epsilon naught, right? And as it only depended on the sigma, it doesn't matter if you take a hexagon or a triangle close to the center, the magnitude of electric field is going to be pretty similar. Okay, so now we have established that the electric field at A is exactly the same as E0. Okay, so now using our argument, if we want the electric field, the contribution due to simply one triangle, which is actually what we want, right? Looking at our left case. So our final answer is that the electric field at the edge is going to be simply one sixth of EA, which is E0 by six. And this will be our required answer in the first case. Okay guys, now in the same question, they have also asked what happens if the plates have the shape of a regular pentagon? So now let's talk about that. Okay, so now the problem with the regular pentagon is that you cannot simply draw five regular pentagons, uh, you know, around it and obtain a symmetrical structure, something like what we observed in this case, right? It's simply not possible for the pentagon due to the angular constraints. Whereas with the pentagon, you can do one smart thing. Uh, again, uh, the electric field at the center is going to be E0 itself, and we need the electric field at one of the edge points. Let's call it as, let's say we are trying to determine it at this particular point, and let's call the point as A. Okay guys, so what I'm doing here is, uh, I'm gonna split this pentagon uh, into five triangles, something like this. And this angle is basically 360 divided by five, which is 72 degrees. So five of these 72 triangles together give a contribution of E0 at the center of the pentagon, right? So five of the triangles give a contribution of E0, which means one of these triangles contributes a factor of E0 by five at the vertex, right? Now this again doesn't help because we need the answer at the edge point, right? But we can do a very interesting thing here. If you draw another pentagon, something like this, this angle is actually going to be uh, 180 minus 72 divided by 2, uh, which is actually 54 degrees. And similarly, even this angle is 54, so the overall angle is 108. So this angle is 108. Similarly, this angle is also 108. So 108 plus 108 is 216 degrees. So if you subtract it with 360 and divide it by 2, you'll get 144 by 2, which is 72 degrees, which is actually this angle over here. So now the interesting part here is, uh, if you join these two points, and you join these two points, you actually get a 72 triangle that we just drew here. 
and this point this vertex point let's call it as point a now we know that the electric field at a due to all of these due to pentagon one our imaginary pentagon two and two of the imaginary 72 triangles they all should contribute a net field of e naught exactly using the concept that i explained in the first case right as it is symmetrically placed with respect to uh, the charges the field can be considered uniform over there uh, at the point a so it's going to be e naught okay so now let's add their individual contributions now due to the 72 triangles is easy to write right because one 72 triangle contributes e naught by 5 at its vertex so two of them contributes a factor of twice of e naught by 5 whereas the we don't know how much does the pentagon contribute at its edge right but the interesting part is that is exactly what we want so let's call that as e so this should all add up to e naught so from here we'll get e as 3 e naught by 10 in between the region uh, of the vertex point so that's exactly what we wanted so this will be our answer so now let's move on to the next problem okay guys so this is the next problem so we so we have a charge q that is uniformly spread on a thin dielectric square plate okay so this is not this is not a conducting plate again it's dielectric the electric potential at its center is found to be v1 okay at the center of the square plate if six such charge plates are joined to make a hollow cube the potential at the center of the cube is found to be v2 okay so we have to determine the potential at one of the vertex of this cube and in all the cases the potential at infinity is assumed to be zero okay so yeah so let's begin with it oh yeah so we have a positively charged dielectric square plate and let's consider its surface density to be some plus sigma so the potential at the center of this cube vc is actually given to be v1 okay so now you take six of these plates build a cube out of it and the potential at the center of this cube let's call it v0 this v0 is given to be v2 and now they want us to determine the potential at one of the vertex of this cube so let's say we have to find it at this particular vertex let's call it as point a determining va is our problem we again have to use some kind of scaling logic in order to do this problem right so the the thing is yesterday i mostly dealt with the cases of volume charge distribution and in that we actually discovered that once we double the linear dimensions potential scales by a factor of four so in the current scenario that is when you're dealing with surface charge elements the potential will actually scale as the surface area because that's what the charge depends on divided by the linear dimensions so if i double the linear dimensions then surface area increases by two squared and r increases by a factor of two that is potential actually becomes 2x okay so that's fairly simple so potential scales linearly with the linear dimensions okay so how do we determine it at the vertex now okay guys, so we have to pay close attention to our cube over here so there are like two types of the faces of the cube here so so one of the types uh, are the fa are the faces where one of the vertex is a right so that contributes to the top of this box the this side of this box and the side that is inside the plane right and then we have the second type of the face where where none of the edge points is a right so that one of those examples is the, is the front of the box one is the floor and one is this side over here either of them will contribute different amounts to the potential at the vertex a right but each type of them will contribute equal proportions so what i'm saying is let's say the top phase of the cube contributes v double prime at a then the side phase will also contribute v double prime and the back phase will also contribute v double prime but the contributions due to the, the front bottom and this side is going to be is going to be different in comparison to v double prime so first let's talk about the points of whom a is a vertex how do we determine a so we'll again use scaling principles we know that the center potential is v1 so we'll again do what we did with the cubes yesterday we'll duplicate this cube and then we'll duplicate this entire thing and we'll place it over here so now we have a, a square of whose side length we increase by a factor of two so the vertex point of our original square of side length a is now the center of this big square okay guys so as we discussed earlier the potential scales linearly right so as we double the size of the square the potential at a is going to be double the potential double the potential due to the first cube right so initially for the first cube at the center it was v1 so the new cube it will be 2v1 okay so now let's get rid of the fake cubes that we involved 2v1 was responsible because of all the four cubes but as three of them were fake the contribution due to one square is going to be one fourth which is v1 by 2 so okay so what we determined in that slide is that the potential at a due to this face that is a side one and the top one and the back 
of this box these three contribute a factor of v1 by 2 at the point a so let's just write it down so one contribution is three times because there are three faces who contributes v1 by now if we can't now if we find out what the contribution of the front the other side and the bottom is then our question is done okay guys so with this uh, the, at the center of the cube the potential due to the entire cube was given to be v2 right so the put in the contribution due to one face of the cube will be one sixth right because there are six faces so the contribution is going to be v2 by six okay guys so if you remember the vertex point was somewhere over here at a distance of a from this vertex right so this was our required point so if we somehow determine the potential at this point due to this square plate then our question is pretty much done so observe what i'm doing so i duplicated this i kept this over here then i duplicated these two plates and kept it over here okay so the reason for me doing this is now a is the center of a new cube whose side length is 2a because of the small square plate we dis we found out that the potential contribution at the center was v2 by 6 so now if you scale the dimension by two times the potential due to the due to the plate at the corresponding center of the cube is going to double right so this contribution is 2 times v2 by 6 which is actually v2 by 3 okay so now let's get rid of the imaginary cubes that we just introduced so now again as we got rid of three of them the actual contribution is going to be one fourth of what we found out and this just equates to v2 by 12 okay guys so take the bottom plate as our example so we basically determined that the potential due to this bottom plate at this vertex a is v2 by 4 and as as this right plate over here the front plate and the bottom plate are symmetrically located with respect to this edge point a we can say that their contributions are also going to be symmetric so it will be 3 times v2 by 12 hence our final solution at the potential at edge vertex a is going to be 3 v1 by 2 plus v2 by 4 okay guys so let's now let's move on to the last problem of the day so if you enjoyed the video please do like and subscribe it'll mean a lot so this problem is from the check section and this is actually a very interesting problem so we're going to use scaling here in this problem as well but this has this is slightly tricky okay i think this is my favorite problem on scaling from this chapter so let's read the problem statement so we have a uniformly charged right angle triangular lamina lamina meaning it's just a plane uh, surface charge density okay of abc and it is shown in the figure the acute angle of the vertex A. So angle A is given to be theta. So the potential at vertices A and B are given. So we have to find the potential at the vertex C. So, so the problem statement is quite straightforward. Okay, so this is our triangular lamina guys. So angle A is theta and we have to find the potential at the end C. Now how do we use scaling here? So again, all our previous questions were based on the ideas that we know the potential at a point due to a configuration and we double the size of the configuration, right? So in this question, uh, our configuration is a, is a right angle triangle. So if we somehow introduce another right angle triangle using geometry, then we can exploit the ideas of scaling. And that, some of you may have guessed it, if we drop an altitude from the vertex C to our hypotenuse of the triangle, we actually obtain two right triangles over here. Let's call this point as D. So we have two right triangles, ACD and CDB. So if this angle is theta, then even this angle is going to be theta. First, we had a right triangle. One angle was theta. Now we have successfully splitted it into two right triangles with one of its angles as theta. So now we can actually use scaling principles. So these three triangles are just magnified versions of each other, basically. They are similar triangles. Now what we'll do is we'll consider some side length, the side AC to be X. Um, so the, the side length CB is going to be X tan theta. Actually, let's just write uh, the hypotenuse as x because that will be, we don't have to include the tan theta, cot theta terms then. So the length AC is going to be x cos theta. The length CB is going to be x sin theta. So again, from the previous questions, we in a, in a lamina, when we scale the linear dimensions, the potential scales linearly, right? Okay, so now let's just separately draw either of these triangles. So first I'm drawing the triangle ADC. Okay, so and this angle is theta. Okay, now the side lengths are going to be, so the length AD is x cos square theta and the length CD is x sine theta cos theta. So now let's determine the scaling factor. So uh, for the big triangle, the side opposite to the angle theta is x sine theta, right? And in the triangle ACD, the side opposite to angle theta is x sine theta cos theta. So it's as good as saying we multiplied each side length of the bigger triangle by a factor of cos theta. So we scaled it by a factor of cos theta. Uh, observe the side length 
that is adjacent to this angle theta. So that is x cos theta here. And here it is x cos theta times cos theta, right? So every single side length, we multiply it by a factor of cos theta. And again, guys, using our previous result, when the linear dimensions is scaled by a factor of k, the potential becomes kv, right? Which basically means due to the big triangle at the potential at a was given to be va and the potential at b to b was given to be vb. Now point A is going to be the same for either of these triangles. This point C will be playing the role of B, let's call it B prime, for this small triangle. Okay, so uh, now the potential at A will scale by a factor of cos theta. So this becomes VA cos theta. And the potential at uh, this point C is going to be going to be VB scaled by a factor of cos theta. So this is at this end, the potential is going to be VB cos theta. Okay. So as we needed the answer for the NC, we got the contribution due to this small triangle over here. It came out to be VB cos theta. So now let's pick up the triangle CBD. So this angle is theta. So this point C will play the role of A. So let's call this point as, as A double prime because the point C, angle C is actually theta and in the bigger triangle, angle A is theta, right? So point C will play the role of a fake point A for the triangle CBD. Right? Now let's write down the side length. So this side length was x sine theta. So this would be x sine theta cos theta. This side length is x sine square theta. So if you observe something, now let's compare it to the original triangle. So the side length opposite to theta is x sine square theta here. And here it was x sine theta. So this is basically a, a triangle that was scaled by a factor of sine theta. So all the edge lengths got multiplied by sine theta. So what happens to the poten potential at each point? It gets scaled by a factor of sine theta. So as we need the potential at the end C, we know that it plays the role of A. So the potential at end C is going to be VA sine theta. So finally, the potential at end C is going to be the potential due to B uh, is going to be VB dash plus VA double dash. That's going to be VA sine theta plus VB cos theta. So that's the answer. So that's going to be the solution to this problem. So that's it for this video, guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. Do like, share and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And that's it. Thanks for watching.